So traditional question. Anybody would like to show anything? Um, just <laughs> I want. I knew this, Alex. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Hello. Yeah. One second. I will share my screen. Um, Everybody's interested in stuff. It's. Yeah. I just. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, nice. So uh, today I want to talk about this pull request, which uh, provides Adobe Stocks SDK stop, and uh, I want to describe what progress we uh, have at this moment. So uh, this weekend I added uh, next functionality. Um, this maybe speech will be a little bit technical, but anyway. So uh, what's the idea of this tab module? We need to have a functionality which will allow us to run tests, integration, API tests, or even um, sometimes develop uh, Adobe Stock integration uh, functionality uh, without connection to the Adobe Stock service. To provide this functionality, we uh, uh, decided to find the entry point where we can emulate the behavior of Adobe Stock SDK um, as much closely as to the real life. Yes, and uh, I provided next solution. So I created uh, a module, new module, which uh, has named Adobe Stock Clients tab. So this module contains of uh, maybe interesting architecture from my point of view. Again, so I implemented the client class uh, which in implement the client's interface. The same interface implements the Adobe Stock Client uh, module. So let me show you this. So we have the client class, which is responsible for uh, connection to the Adobe Stock service um, using the Adobe, PHP SD, Adobe Stock PHP SDK. So uh, this stub module uh, does next. Uh, as it implements the client interface, it has all public methods uh, which uh, the region uh, client class has. And uh, this module, um, every public uh, method from this interface represents like a, a separate uh, class which provides some data, stub data. For example, search met public method represented like this uh, simple class and when you make a call to the Adobe client uh, service uh, you get a result for in our um, in our case it just uh, currently the role response how role response looks like it looks like this <laughs> so I got this data from the uh, Adobe stock uh, service as a response and uh, just put it uh, in a template uh, namespace. So how it works in real life. So uh, I uh, changed uh, preference in Magenta DI configuration. So you see that the client interface at this moment has Adobe Stock Client Stop implementation. And if you go to the admin section and emulate the call to the Adobe Stock, you will see next. One second, you will see the list of images. I just stub it in uh, this row response. Um, if you click on the image, you will see the image by itself, uh, dimension, all needed attributes, uh, just category, file ID, and so on and so on. But the thing which is need to be done here, and maybe this is the most tricky and interesting part of this pull request, is just to implement the query with some parameters. For example, if uh, just you see uh, more from this series or more from this model, just have um, the same result, the same result at the original uh, search method call. So I'm working on this. I plan to create some stub images for every uh, for every image, right? So the, I think this is enough because with this we will emulate the call to the Adobe Stock service, and also plan to implement some filters in order to make it make it as real as possible. Um, we had had a technical discussion with the Sergey about uh, how we will provide this module to the um, Magento platform. 
currently it's implemented like a separate module but um, this may confuse um, the newcomers for the magenta and the adobe stock uh, module so um, i also plan this week to t uh, talk to the magenta um, technical technical uh, response person who will advise how um, better to place it in the integration folder maybe on a, or another folder in order to be able to run it uh, to include it automatically to the Magenta platform and replace when it needs the original client method um, to emulate the Adobe Stock Service uh, API call. Yep, maybe that's all for me. <laughs> We can't hear you, Sergey. Nice, Alex. Uh, thank you. I have a couple of questions, section. Okay. So, uh, as for uh, related images and different images for each image in Adobe Stock, I think that may not be necessary. And as for filters implementation, I think we can just take a look on the tests that we have right now and uh, implement the stop just enough to cover the tests that we that we currently have uh, oh. it's mm -hmm. not uh, it's not necessary to cover all the possible situations so all, all, all the possible scenarios like have uh, different related images for each image because we are probably checking just one or two and yes, that's yeah. enough. Uh, so the goal is for tests to pass basically on uh, the stop module without the connection to Adobe Stock API. And as for just, I noticed that uh, there is some issue with related images, isn't it? it is it is it your local installation or? It's my uh, local installation, and currently this data uh, is taken from this. Uh, from this huge array, which I just copied from the Adobe Stock response. So I open the real okay. installation. It's the same search result, open. all right. Yes, in the same search result. I see. I mean, if that is a bug of Adobe Stock that when more than four images are returned, we are not cropping it. No, no, no. It's just uh, you, you see it's um, this because when we open an image, right? Uh -huh. uh, this and this section makes a request, and we have this limitation for four images. So everything is okay with the current implementation of Adobe Stock Client uh, Search and the related images. This only my section because again, uh, this and these are, um, they make a request. They use the search method, and the search method returns only this raw da data. So this is only uh, the work of the yeah, stop module. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I mean, we probably want to add the limitation on front end, and as well to enforce it to display ah. only four images from the response. Ah, if only ah, I got it. So, for example, if you have more than four images, uh, you should limit it uh, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's okay, out of scope it. of stop. There's just a note so, uh, to open an issue. Yeah, it's, but uh, uh, it's it. nice. Yeah. It's nice, and also what I want to say, just uh, I have one thought. One second, please. Ah, yeah, I want to show this in order to, um, for example, search method, right? So I copy paste some code from uh, the original method again in order to be as close as possible to the current implementation. And then how I generate data for data, for example, to quota, right? So I created some array with the needed attributes for our implementation, and then create a new ob object which is need to be created in a uh, PHP SDK for Adobe Stock connection. So this module as close as possible to the real life solution. Um, yeah. So maybe maybe that's all for me. For today <laughs> okay nice very good thank you uh, thank you yeah uh, we can continue conversation on on how to place this model properly 
I think that the preference for stop should be de declared in the module itself and the module we may need to place it into several folders like for integration tests or API functional tests yeah, and we still would like to investigate if it's possible to use this model in an MFTF test the same way Magenta uses it. Yeah, I tried to find an answer on this question, but unfortunately, I faced with some um, with some auto load issues. So, but uh, yeah, I will investigate this more deeply and uh, report you back this week. Okay, just uh, let me know if any help is required or any discussion is required. That is okay, uh, really valuable for us to run tests uh, offline. Let's say run test without, uh, let's say that run sta stable tests we, without relying on the connection to other stock. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will, I, will, uh, I will ping you in two days if I will not find a proper solution for this. Yeah, I will try to uh, work on it, like to, to investigate it too and let you know. Just okay, thank you. To cover it from both sides. Thanks, yeah, Alex. Yeah, nice. Great demo. Thank you. Uh, I have a question regarding the stub. Um, maybe this has been discussed in the past, um, but I'm wondering this kind of stub functionality generically may be useful for any consumers of the Adobe Stock PHP SDK. Um, so I'm wondering if there is opportunity to maybe not immediately, not in the short term, but just thinking more long term, migrating some of this functionality to possibly that Adobe Stock PHP SDK repo. It's um, not a problem because just this current implementation is granul is very good granulated, I think, because uh, right. It, it yeah and. Uh, uh, I was encouraged by the architecture of the Adobe Stock client integration. We have every uh, piece of our logical code separated, and this allows us to manage it in a more flexible and comfortable way. So this template folder, sure. which I inter uh, introduced, we can uh, we can modify it a little bit and put to the PHP SDK uh, simply because I use the same object and the same way to create the risk the, I, I use the same way as php sdk use it uh, the only thing is neat is just to create some fixed tools from the data i created um, just yeah in the future we can discuss this and i can assist with the migrating this stuff to the php adobe stock but uh, i think the best uh, time for this is will be when we uh, completely release this uh, stub module for the magenta integration for sure, yeah. I don't want to delay anything or, or drastically change plans in the short term. I'm just kind of thinking about. Yeah, but it's great um, idea. Yeah, that's like one, a one, idea. one thing I was considering as a potential risk for this stub longer term is what if perhaps the um, structure of the data changes on the SDK side? Um, ah, it's the, not a problem. Again, sorry to interrupt you, maybe just because of my internet connection, but uh, again, we have a fixed source. Uh, so it's yeah. really um, easy to change uh, their role response. But, and right. again, if uh, PHP SDK will change uh, some, will change dramatically, I mean, this new major version, it means that uh, everything should be rechecked and rewrite. For example, unit right. tests, integration tests, and so on, so on. So this will be completely in the scope of the major release of the PHP SDK. Right. Yeah, it's it's not uh, it's not a problem. I'm just thinking more like um, if the structure changes for whatever reason silently by PHP SDK without doing a proper major release or something, then we may not know about this um, immediately, which will obviously mess with the Adobe Stack Integration Community Project, um, but also means that the stub becomes out of sync with the response data. It's not a problem today, and it might never be a problem, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud. 
that's all. Yeah, but if they will change the implementation, not only stuff will be affected, but they also the Adobe stock integration itself. Yeah. Yeah, considering that this is an API, I guess that will be communicated and such changes should be released as a separate version. So, shouldn't be an issue in like regular uh, API version in world. Okay, great. We can skip my concern then. Good. Anybody else would like to demo anything? Okay, then I am jumping in. And I would like to show you one. Uh, actually, I would like to demo my pull request uh, to the Adobe Stock integration, where uh, finally the media gallery was moved to the uh, to the the place of media gallery. Uh, basically, after the, this pull request will be merged, and a new media gallery is enabled by default. Once you go to media gallery, you will see our result of our controller execution. So. This is a new media gallery. To switch it to the old one, you will need to go to stores configuration, uh, system enhanced media gallery field set and disable the enhanced media gallery. And that will be switched back. Uh, so now we can continue developing uh, the media gallery on a slide panel that is much closer to the reality and we can start implementing the functionality for adding the images, selecting and adding them to the content, as well as uh, opening another slide panel for uh, the details and so on. Uh, also, as you may notice, I did remove the preview component from the grid. And right now, when I click on the image, it doesn't open the preview, but it selects the image. Right now, it's a dummy implementation, just adds a border. Uh, probably should be adjusted a bit. Uh, also, so they... yeah. Uh, sorry, um, sorry for interrupting. I just have a question related to the media gallery being on a separate page. Um, I wonder how difficult would be to have that grid experience with the media gallery um, added to the main navigation? Well, we had it on the main navigation just before the pull request. <laughs> no, I mean, it's good that we have it on the slide out panel now, but I'm asking uh, just like as an additionally, having that the same experience that is in the slide out on a separate page accessible through the main navigation. Would it so be difficult there... to do? No, that will not be diffic difficult, but that will be different controller, different layout for that one. It's, yeah. But we already have it, that control and layout, because you had the media gallery on a separate page. Yeah, I changed them. But I can just, instead of changing them, uh, I can copy them, right, and have uh, two separate layouts. Yeah, separate I mean, like, yes, the it's more not a problem. Because the more we work on the user experience of their managing images and the, with the work that we are going to do uh, with image resize, creating that renditions, that makes sense for user to access images, not just from the scope of inserting the image, but rather in the scope of just like doing the operations, uploading the images, uh, moving them into folders, assigning new attributes. So this is something that uh, kind of would require a separate access to the media gallery. Okay, I see that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, yeah, 
20 to think it through because right now it's it's kind of the same right it's just listing of the images that we have but later when we'll have some actions uh we'll yeah, need the difference. to uh, yeah to to have different actions or remove some actions from the media gallery that is uh, on a separate page right and yeah yeah exactly so it's just like different button bar um but the experience of managing images is going to be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I understood your point. Okay, so I'll add the story for that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, create a story and let's discuss it. Okay. Uh, yeah, also... Uh, recently, I merged the pull request of uh, created by Nazar. Recently updated. Uh, the unlicensed, I, I licensed overlay uh, user. Unlicensed overlay is now added to the pictures that are downloaded from Adobe Stock integration, but uh, are not licensed. As you can see, the small overlay here. And the way it was done is quite uh, interesting, I say. It's important for the next updates that we are going to have. So instead of adding the uh, required column and uh, required indexer for this to the media gallery UI, we had to implement this functionality in Adobe, in the, on the Adobe Stock site because licensed uh, is an attribute uh, that has sense on the in scope of Adobe Stock integration, not the in scope of media gallery uh, without the Adobe Stock integration, right? So for that, uh, a column was added to Media Gallery Asset Grid table. As usual, I have to probably increase my font a bit, right? Yes, please. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so the column. Uh, was added to Media Gallery Asset Grid for all the information that we will need to display as part of the Media Galleries that comes from Adobe Stock Integration and uh, may not be present without Adobe Stock Integration. We'll need to add columns uh, to Media Gallery Asset Grid from the Adobe Stock Integration uh, module, in this case from Adobe Stock Image module. And uh, then the indexer was added to the pool that was uh, that is inserting the value for the licensed field to the database. And the indexer uh, so we have the images index indexer interface in Media Gallery UI API module. It was, by the way, also introduced by Nazar. Thanks for that. And so the Media Gallery UI is adding the main indexer that is uh, adding the information like its height, title, and so on. And in this case, a separate indexer introduced by Adobe Stock Integration is handling the licensed field right now. Maybe later it will have uh, it will handle more fields. Also, uh, while the code is open, uh, just a couple of notes: how the media gallery was extended, how the old media gallery is replaced with the new one. Uh, basically, it's done using two plugins. Uh, right now, on the front end. We have uh, two entry points to the media gallery. That's 
a button that looks like this, like a section that looks like this, and this is image uploader uh, UI component from Magento AI module. Uh, that is opening uh, the media gallery. And then there are buttons uh, as part of WYSIWYGI editor, and they are implemented in the tiny MC4 adapter or tiny MC3 adapter. Right now we are supporting only tiny MC4 because tiny MC3 is deprecated. Uh, so those are two entry points to the media gallery. And what they do, they are calling the browser, the media browser, that is browser.js file in lib in Magento library. And uh, they just call in the open dialog method and provide the URL to open this dialog. So what we needed to do, we needed to provide our URL that is pointing to our controlling controller to fill to fill the page here. So the content of this page is returned as a response from the URL provided to open dialog method. To change this URL, I had to update the configuration for both image uploader and uh, TinyMC4 adapter. And that was done by two plugins. The first plugin is uh, added to, after prepare, to the prepare method of uh, the image UI component. And if the configuration, if the media gallery Enhanced media gallery is not enabled in the configuration, it does nothing. If it's enabled, we are setting our URL to the configuration of the component. And the same for Visivik, pretty much the same. Just a bit different config keys, but the same approach. And as a result, the content that you can see on the slide panel is provided by uh, Media Gallery Index Controller and uh, corresponding Media Gallery Index Index Layout that contains the container, uh, the container block and UI component inside the container. The container block is needed to uh, initialize and to apply bindings to the content to actually render the Media Gallery listing in context of knockout uh, library. Uh, so probably this container, the container block, uh, the container template that is just a diff, but it initializes the the container compo component for this diff will be used to uh, to communicate between the media gallery and the content. The actual uh, the actual component is currently very simple. It uh, has uh, knowledge about the mass and recomponent and pretty much it supplying bindings and uh, triggering the first layout styles update. That's it. Any questions? Good, then it looks like everything is clear. Uh, then uh, some additional pull requests that were merged recently. The fix for the date filter. Uh, Nazar found out that, found out that uh, if we will use date uh, component instead of date, date range, we don't have any issues with the dates. That's uh, any bugs that currently uh, are opened. And uh, yeah, so the fix is very simple. It's just changing the date range to date. 
actually if you take a look and at the components uh, here is a date range component and here is a date component so as you can see from 2 is mentioned in the date component so it looks more like the range component than the date component uh, that means the date is the component uh, it's probably specifically introduced for the date and it already can handle ranges so that's fine for us uh, then we have updated slack link in the readme if anybody have troubles with it uh, now it's fixed uh, Then the pull request by Yaroslav. Uh, when, so in certain circumstances, uh, we were not, we were showing the name confirmation dialog. Right now we are not showing it. And also, Yeah, so in two circumstances we, we were showing it uh, and we are not showing it right now and then the fix for the quantity of images is not updated after image was licensed so that's basically we were not updating the profile in Adobe Stack Integration. You don't have the button for Adobe Stack Integration in the new media gallery. But if we'll switch to the old one, my end debug mode now takes too long. Uh, yeah, and by the way, here how you are switching to the old media gallery just enable set to no and save configuration then go back to the entry point oh i i don't think i have the, uh you can see the old media gallery loads i don't think i oh i specify the credentials that's good so in the profile pop-up then uh, that will be visible if I will log in here. No, I haven't set up the integration correctly on my instance. But uh, the number of available in images were not updated after, right after listen, licensing an image. So after you spent one credit on buying an image, that was not instantly reflected on the profile pop-up and that was fixed as well uh, i guess uh, that's it for the pull requests uh, stay tuned guys as we have the media gallery and slide panel uh, finally uh, i will be moving to ready for development the tasks for adding uh, the functionality related to slide panel adding the buttons uh, to the media gallery like open uh, adobe stock integration add the selected image and we, we are still a bit uh, blocked as for folder management because we need for to implement the folder uh, the directory structure tree first and that task was recently moved from in progress back to uh, the ready for development it wasn't uh, completed yet so if anybody is interested in implementing the directory tree uh, we can work together on that one that is probably the hardest uh, the most complex task right now that is uh, uh, up for grabs and another 
another important thing for us is to think on the resizing uh, functionality that was presented the previous meeting. As resizing is outside of media gallery interface, we'll need a separate entry point from the JavaScript files, probably from the image uploader and tiny uh, MC for adapter or call in the resizing dialog. And if anybody is interested in discussing the approach, uh, feel free to message to me. I haven't created a task yet because I to create a task I have to uh, have uh, have some approach ready for it just to uh, to have the definite idea how how that should be implemented. I don't know it yet, uh, so it's still in discussion. That's it for me. Uh, now is a good chance to ask the question or maybe provide a feedback or share whatever is on your mind right now. Yes, yeah, Sergi. Uh, I need to discuss with the task regarding my pull request. Message disappear when the request with the broken credential is sent second time. Okay. Uh, good. Would you like me to share or can you share the screen? Yeah. Can you please share the screen right now? I need to log in. So it will take some time. So. Yep. Thanks. Uh, this one. Right. Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned that you have some few questions regarding this. So can you please uh, ask? Yeah, so the last message from me, I, I wasn't able to reproduce it, but then we uh, talk on Slack and finally we were able to reproduce it. Uh, the only scene here is uh, so basically you are overriding the data storage component and yeah right now i'm looking at the possibility of doing that without overriding overriding the data storage comp uh, component because that change looks quite harsh uh, let's say we will need to support this component uh, if the data storage will change so i'm tr I I'm trying to to minimize the uh, overridden the number of overridden components from Adobe Stock integration side. Uh, generally, it's fine. It's good. The only scene, the uh, I would try to get rid of this override if if possible. Right now, I uh, I'm not seeing the approach that uh, that can be applied instead. So if you give me some time to think about it and if I will not find the better if I will find the better the better approach without the the override in the data storage component I will let you know. If not then we'll we will go with that approach. That's okay, that's not so yeah, bad. Okay. The only thing we'll need just to take care of to uh, uh, maintain additional component and make sure that we update it uh, if there are some changes from Magenta side. That's the only concern that I have here. Okay. Okay, anything else? No, that's from me. Good, then uh, thanks guys for attending the meeting. Thanks for participating. Thank you for your contributions. And yeah, uh, see you on GitHub, see you on Slack and on the next meeting as well. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.
Later. Bye, guys. Bye.